Star. Since his debut movie, With Nail and I, our final guest is one of Britain's most successful actors, going on to star in hit films including Gosford Park and The Age of Innocence. Later this year, he will be appearing alongside Meryl Streep in the Thatcher biopic The Iron Lady. But for now, we can enjoy him in the new period drama The Crimson Petal and the White. Please welcome Richard E. Grant. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I have much. to say, that was the cleanest bit we could find. It's oh, a bit yeah. saucy. <laughs> it's all prostitutes. And all that. Is it true your character wears his corset on the outside? Yeah, the, the uh, female costume designers thought that he was such a kinky doctor that he would wear a corset on the outside. And I didn't ask anything more, I just agreed, because <laughs> I know that if a woman says that's what you should wear, I fall out. <laughs> One, when it wasn't about brothels, you yeah. were in the leading lady's bedroom, and what was going on was so obviously erotic, it kind of framed out of shot. <laughs> you did a very strange examination. Do you yes, want to like no. <laughs> <laughs> um. We're all keeping our legs together. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Richard, do you, want, do, you want to, do you want to explain to people exactly what your part is, in case they, they, have, oh, they haven't I played seen the, the role? The, the, um, the main character's wife is has some kind of consumption and she can't get out of bed and the, uh, the doctor just thinks that she's hysterical okay. and uh, because he's you know a 19th century doctor thinks that all women are just invent stuff mm -hmm. so he has to do a, a daily or a weekly um, put the gloves on and feel up so um, so it's one of those <laughs> and I got paid yes. did, you, uh, did you do a lot of research I did yes I did I'm doing it now. <laughs> it's an amazing program for how it explores the uh, Victorian attitude to sexuality, isn't it? I yeah. think it's one of the most truthful programs I've ever seen about that. Good, 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 good. I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but for the BBC, I mean, we're so used to costume drama being rather deodorised and yeah. rather sanitised and very chocolate boxy, and then along comes this drama series, which is all set in brothels, and it's about it hinges around a prostitute and her relationship with her clients and how you know the hypocrisy of of the era. I mean, what was is it, it like? like a, a modern day or an olden day rather a Victorian pretty woman? It is exactly that. It is, that. Is it? Yeah. Except that pretty woman said that you always end up with Richard Gere at the end, which we all know is bollocks. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. Say that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. We do have to apologize. Testicles. <laughs> it is lunchtime. <laughs> I love it. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> What would you say that it? I mean, Janet touched on the fact that it, it uh, you know, it shows a, a different side to Victorian society. What, what would you say that it, it teaches us about women? Because you said your doctor sees all women as hysterical. What, what would you say that it, it, it teaches about Victorian women? Well, women I think that general? there was what, what Janet was saying is that there is a double standard, that um, that you were supposed to, that women were supposed to be all these perfect non-sexual. Um, beings, beings. Mm. but then of course you know they, a man may be married to that kind of woman, but then going off you know on the slide the Madonna uh, whore thing you have your exactly. lovely wife at home. Yeah. And so I think it rips the sort of hypocrisy of that open. Are you are you enjoying the fact that I mean obviously with Nell and I was a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. but that must be the ago. film that everybody stops you and says. Love that film. They do, and I'm so grateful that I have enough hair and teeth that I can be recognised. <laughs> <laughs> well, the amazing thing about that when I was reading about you, is that you, you don't drink at all. I don't, know. And yet you played the best drunk I've ever seen in my life. Well, thank you. <laughs> you did. And you know, do you? Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some experience. Yes. But they made you drink, didn't they? They did. On the, la on the last night before we... we so the last day of rehearsals, the director said, you have to be drunk. And I said, look, my father was an alcoholic and I understand all this stuff of what, what it looks like. He said, no, you have to get absolutely legless yourself. So... I, I did, but oh. it took me a whole night and a sort of half a bottle of champagne, and then I got very drunk and very vomity as well. Oh dear! Yeah. So. Oh, it's good never really stop, Carol. Vomity, that's <laughs> Can we have <laughs> let's have a little look at you in action? Here we go. <sighs> have we got any more? Liar! What's in your toolbox? Don't we have nothing. Sit down, liar! You've got antifreeze. You fool. You should never mix your drinks.
Never watch. <laughs> so you've never actually watched that film because you, you were looking away then, you don't like watching yourself. Yeah, no, I, I watched the, the rough cut for the first time um, in 1985 or 86 when we made it and I was sitting with my wife and I drew blood on her wrist because I thought that I was so terrible in it that I'd never work again. Oh, so Richard. I just decided never to watch any stuff. Oh, wow. Do you watch this? No. 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 <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. no, it must be quite a jump to play uh, this crazy doctor in uh, the Victorian series, and at the same time you're playing Michael Heseltine. Exactly. I have, yeah. Um, have you dyed your hair blonde? Uh, it was dyed blonde, which is why it's this sort of Ronald Reagan yeah, it needs a sort bit of, of weird colour now. You need now. a bit of conditioner on that. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah. And you would know. <laughs> I was like Michael Hesseltine because I met blonde. him a few times. I worked for him years ago for his publishing house and, and I met him like? at Christmas. Very imperious. Was he? Very imperious and very arrogant. And then I met him again at a party at Christmas and he was exactly the same, even though <laughs> obviously he's much older now. Have, uh, did you meet him in person as part of your research? I, or I how didn't did you know. research I, him? I, I, I read his autobiography and then mm -hmm. I read Mrs. Thatcher's autobiography as well, so that you get the two viewpoints of the yeah. same events, which was really useful. And then I watched endless stuff of him on YouTube. Okay. And, um, about your eye did they give you eyebrows? Falsies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, false they eyebrows. Marvelous. How yeah. marvelous. Dye dyed my hair blonde and, and false eyebrows, and they gave me, you know, those power suits from the 1980s yeah. with big shoulders and stuff. Wonderful. And, and how was it working with Meryl Streep? She is the best of the best of the best, as you would imagine. Mm. She knew everybody's name. She had no entourage. Um, and were you nervous? Were you yeah, we were really it? nervous because, I mean, she was also nervous because on the first day she came in, there were 30 people playing cabinet ministers and members of parliament, all men. And then she came in with the female director, Phyllida Lloyd, so the mm. only two women who came in. And you got a feeling of what it must have been like for all these men to suddenly have a woman who's more yeah. powerful than anybody else and mm -hmm. of course she is with 16 Oscar nominations everything. Mm. but she knew everybody's name and um, we all called her behind her back which I told her on the last day we called her Cheryl or Beryl Why? <laughs> well because it's much easier to say who you're working with Beryl Streep because <laughs> somehow it's such a legend when you work with her that um, mm. but she was she was the was best she, of the best. Was she a queen bee? Would you say? And how are you at being? She around didn't need Queen to be. Bees? She did this amazing thing where she would, um, if she didn't think that something was going right, she'd just quietly go over and say, no, 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 and then <laughs> it would just change. Okay. She never had to shout or raise her voice or anything. And but, and so it was very, very, very quickly. You've, talk, you've mentioned your wife uh, quite often. Do you think you'd let her rebrand you? Not that you need it. You know, you're a very well turned out man. But would it's you let of her? her. <laughs> 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 she Got bought it. this. <laughs> so yeah. do, you, do you mind that? Or are no, you happy I'm to very go with grateful. the flow? I'm very, very grateful. <laughs> She's a gorgeous lady, isn't she? Oh, thank you. You're a very attractive lady. What, what are we going to see you in next? Because obviously you're playing this rather rampant, crazy doctor at the moment. What have you got coming up next? Silence. I have no idea. Well, <laughs> the Iron Lady. The Iron Lady. Iron Lady. Iron Lady. Yeah. Yeah. Iron Lady. Yeah. Iron Lady. Yeah. 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 Do you know, it's been lovely to have you. you know. It's been lovely to have you on the show, Richard. Thank you for having yeah. me on the First show. First time ever. Richard E. Grant, everyone. Thank you.